And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith on the earth? Where a police officer was killed in the line of duty today. Investigators have not released the name of that officer just yet. The shooting happened this afternoon in Maryville near Knoxville. Officials say the Maryville police officer and a sheriff's deputy responded to a domestic disturbance. And when they pulled up to that home, a man walked out of the house and started shooting. The officer was hit and killed. The deputy returned fire and took that gunman into custody. We would uh, ask our citizens to uh, remember this uh, officer's family. He has three small children. It's a very trying time for his family. It's a trying time for the men and women of the Maryville Police Department. It's a trying time for the law enforcement of this community. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. A little girl, drugged, tortured, and murdered. It's impossible to imagine why and how someone could do this, but that's exactly what police say happened to an innocent 10-year-old girl. And today, two of the suspects, including the child's mother, are expected in court. Michelle, you're supposed to protect this kid. She's your own kid. What do you have to say? Police escorted the girl's mother, 35-year-old Michelle Martins, and her boyfriend, 31-year-old Fabian Gonzalez from police headquarters, to be booked last night. A third suspect, Gonzalez's cousin, 31-year-old Jessica Kelly, is also facing charges for this murder. This is by far one of the most disturbing and upsetting stories that we've covered in a very long time. We do want to warn you, as we learn more about what happened, the details are extremely difficult to hear. Our Erica Zuko is following the latest for us from the KOB newsroom right now. Erica? Well, Rachel, just this morning, police released the criminal complaint detailing why they believe these three suspects are responsible. Now, much of what they saw at this scene is so disturbing. We cannot share it on television, but we can give you some more details about what police believe happened. Now, the complaint says that officers showed up after a neighbor called 911, saying a man, call, saying a man knocked on her door after being hit with an iron. When they got there, they say Michelle Martins and Fabian Gonzalez, a boyfriend, she met online, told them Gonzalez's cousin, Jessica Kelly, attacked them and was still inside Martin's apartment with Martin's little girl. They said Kelly was staying with them after being released from prison days before. Police say they saw Kelly slam the door of the apartment shut, then jump from a balcony. They took her away in handcuffs and went to the apartment where they found a 10-year-old girl dead. There was evidence that she had been sexually assaulted, strangled and stabbed, and that someone had tried to cover it up by cleaning the floor, setting a fire, and other disturbing actions. Paul and Jess, Michelle McCord left jail today after posting bond. She's facing four different charges for not reporting abuse that lasted several years. Why wouldn't you report it? Michelle McCord covered up and ignoring our questions Wednesday morning as she left the Oklahoma County Jail. The Jones woman who could not hide in her mugshot is facing four different charges ranging from permitting and failing to report sexual abuse of a child and child neglect. McCord is married to Donald McCord, a former Little League coach who is facing 31 counts of rape and sexual abuse of a child. The Sheriff's Office says the victims are young girls and his family. Is there anything you want to say? Michelle was in court this afternoon to hear her charges and again ignored our questions. On Tuesday, we tried to talk to her ourselves, but nobody answered at the family's home. According to court documents, Michelle did not want to report her husband for, quote, financial reasons and told the young victims to just put locks on their doors. Court documents say Donald raped and sexually abused the girls nearly every day dating back to 2006. The sheriff's office is now trying to determine if there are more victims because of Donald's work as a coach. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life 
and that they might have it more abundantly. This morning, a manhunt in Mississippi. Two nuns found dead, murdered inside their home. Everybody's in shock. Police canvassing the area, looking for nearby surveillance videos, hoping to find clues as to who may have been responsible for the deaths of Sister Margaret Held and Sister Paula Merrill. We begin with a story you'll see only on RTV6. A babysitter accused of molesting a child she was supposed to be taking care of. But tonight, police don't know where 47-year-old Marlita Cox is. And now's Mike Pelton has been digging through court documents all day. And Mike, what have you learned? Well, Candace, here's the arrest warrant for 47-year-old Marlita Wilcox filed in criminal court five. She's accused of molesting a young girl. That girl later told her dad. Back in March, Royal smacked stepped on and choked Gabriel. The court believes it wasn't the first time, and for not stopping it, Amy Carell is going to prison too. At the sentencing, Gabriel's father, Joe Carell, offered forgiveness while pushing back other feelings about Royal. For what he has done to my family, I have forgiven him. Vengeance is in the hand of the creator, not mine. I didn't expect it to go that way. It was a lot calmer than what I thought I'd be in. There was only one reason for that. I had to get Lord on my side. This was already such an unusual and tragic story. And then late this afternoon, it became even more bizarre. A normally quiet Toronto street turned into this in the middle of the day. Body bags remained on a driveway all afternoon as police investigated. When our officers from 43 Division arrived, they found the lifeless bodies of three individuals. Uh, they also took one person into custody. Uh, we are very, very early into the investigation. We have a lot of work to do. Police say it appears all three people were shot by a crossbow. A police source confirms to CBC the three are all from the same family. Police say the crossbow was found in the garage along with the three people who died. They won't say whether it was a typical crossbow used for hunting. I will see you. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. There is no fancy cable news name for the disaster in Louisiana, not a superstorm or some play on the word Armageddon. But while much of the country was caught up in Olympics and politics, the state was suffering on a scale rarely experienced. It's heartbreaking, it really is. 13 people have died, 40,000 homes have been flooded. The need for shelter so dire, people are sleeping in this film studio. This sugarcane farmer spent days sandbagging. It didn't work. You're trying, you're trying, you're trying, and it just looks like nothing's gonna save it. These people's homes have been inundated by water from the Irrawaddy River, which flooded after heavy monsoon rains this year. They are among the 150,000 people across Myanmar who have been impacted by the floods. We don't have a place to live right now, and we don't have money to buy new land. We have been living in the water like this for a month. And good morning. It is currently the 21st of August, 2016. Meteorologist Robert Spetta here with you with one of the most unusual setups in the tropics I have seen in the past uh, seven to eight years working out here in uh, Japan. We have, well, three named storm systems. One pulling off here towards the north. Not too worried about that one. Lion Rock moving down towards the southwest, which is kind of interesting. And model guidance, I'll get to that a little bit later on in the extended range all sorts of all over the place and then we have Mendule. now this one is the one I really want to key in on because that is going to be having the most direct and most near-term impact down here across Japan right now moving
of severe drought is spreading statewide. 22 News reporter Alessandra Martinez found out that we all need to conserve water. Right now, most of the state is about 10 to 15 inches behind in rainfall compared to where we should be right now, and it's up to us together to spare what we do have. In the midst of a summer with little rainfall, the Massachusetts drought is getting worse. The number of regions feeling the effects of a severe drought has expanded to cover nearly 75% of the state, according to the U.S. This is one of thousands of Indian villages where water is the most precious commodity. According to scientists, in just 15 years, our planet will suffer a global crisis the most devastating one humankind has ever faced. Everyone will be affected. Luke 18, 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? What a question. Shall he find faith on earth? When we look what's going on around us, violence, senseless acts of violence against children, perversions, abominations, tainting with God's amazing creation. It's almost as if you're being worn out, completely worn out. In Daniel 7, 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change his times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until the times and times and the dividing of time. I don't know about you, but as time progresses, I feel worn out sometimes. The problems of this world, the violence, it desensitizes you. We spoke a week ago, a week and a half ago about numbing you. It numbs you to God. It numbs you to the people of this world. And because of the iniquity of this world, love is waxing cold. Have you ever had a pair of shoes that was worn out? Maybe a tire. You woke up one day, you've driven it for many years, and all of a sudden, you woke up and the tire is flat. It was worn out. Are you feeling worn out today? by the difficulties of this world, the anger of this world. Satan has come up against you, against your ministry, sending witches your way. Oh yes, there are a lot of witches on YouTube, believe it or not, that claim to be prophetesses, and even men who claim to be prophets that are nothing but witches. He sent all of these delusions your way and whether you're a, a ministry or brother preaching the gospel, or you're simply a brother and sister who's tuning in to view these things, you're worn out by the constant deceptions. People that tell you that the Bible has been changed with the Mandela effect, and you're like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm being worn out left and right. You're worn out about God's coming because of the Shemitah last year. Oh, how big was the Shemitah and how many thousands of people were let down and they're worn out today. Comet Elenin, remember that? Worn out as well. People worn out consistently by people proclaiming things that are gonna happen in the name of God. They don't happen and then they tell you that, hey, it was a mistake. The economic hardships of this life, of this world, that no longer can you go do grocery shopping and just buy what you want. Now you have to go with a little list and then when you go pay at the counter, you're afraid that you can't even pass that debit card through because you're thinking to yourself, man, can I afford this? Can I buy that? Can I buy the other? I know what you're going through, folks. It's not easy, folks. Your health, you name it. The devil is on a full-fledged attack to destroy this world and if you're a disciple of Christ, the devil, Satan, is out to destroy you. And if you're worn out today, I just want to encourage you. Because God asked that question, will he find faith on earth? And we have to encourage each other, brethren. We have to look out for each other, brothers and sisters in the Lord. True disciples of God. 
You know, in Deuteronomy 8, 4, it tells us, Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. There were forty years in there, and their foot didn't even swell once. We work an eight-hour shift, and our feet are swollen. There are times that my wife has to put the socks on my feet, okay? Imagine you, you wake up and your back hurts, right? These people, as long as they were obedient to God, God was their protector. And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you, and thy shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. Deuteronomy 29.5 Their feet did not wear out. Their footwear did not wear out. My brother and sister in the Lord, and they were hard-necked people, stiff-necked people, ignorant people. Such as we are sometimes. But if God did it for them, God can do it for you. If God restored their feet, if God restored their clothes, God can do it for you. In a spiritual sense today, if you are worn out, I want to encourage you and remind you that God is with you. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. God is listening to you. God is listening to every tear that you've cried in that bedroom when no one is looking. God is listening to you. The devil may tell you that God is not listening to you because you've fallen. But if you turn to Jesus Christ and you repent today, God can faith. God is faithful. God is, will restore you. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Out of all their troubles. Do you have a trouble today? The problem is not whether God can restore us. The problem is not whether God can, can heal us. The problem is not whether God can be with us. The problem is, is will God find faith on earth when he returns? And if you've been desensitized to God, if you've been worn out by all of these deceptions, by all of the calamities that are happening, in the name of Jesus Christ, I urge you today, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we uplift each other, Lord. We are nothing without you. We need of you today. We're feeling tired. We're feeling worn. We're feeling beaten up. Father, may you restore us spiritually, just as with the Israelites. Their shoes, they, they didn't wear out. They, they were walking through such terrain, rocky terrain, and their shoes never wore out, Lord. Spiritually speaking, Lord, we, our, our shoes are feeling a little bit difficult right now because of our lack of faith restore that faith lord restore that joy of our salvation that in the name of jesus christ we may preach your gospel your unadulterated word of god all over this world and live a life that is worthy of your calling in the name of jesus if we have fallen short forgive us in the name of jesus christ God is faithful. Do not lose faith. Things are going to get worse and worse and worse. But Satan is defeated and God has already won this war. May God bless each and every single one of you. I love you very, very much in Jesus Christ. Have a good week.